We have risen from the ashes to school the masses. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Scholars of Wrestling Show. I'm your man behind the microphone, Scholar Jeff. Joining us this week, as always, he is loyal. He is dependable. He is the OG, undisputed scholar himself. He is Scholar Tarek. Scholar Tarek, how's your evening going, sir? Other than people doing donuts... Legit doing donuts in the parking lot of uh, the office here. Can you hear it? I heard something. I'm not sure if it'll show up in the final recording of the of the episode. Literally but... just, there was like literally no one out there as we were preparing for this episode. And all of a sudden I just hear, rrr, rrr. I'm like, what the hell is that? But other than that, I'm doing great. This has been a fun night for me. <laughs> oh, been boy, a very, clearly. Uh, been quite a, quite a week, to say the least. Yeah. Yeah, the, I, it's been relatively rare when the game plan for an episode of this show ends up changing so dramatically in just a matter of hours. Uh, if you are been following the world of wrestling, you know as well as anybody else does about the sudden and just very jarring, horrible tragedy that we all have had to endure on some level. We're talking, of course, about the sudden passing of Jay Briscoe, a truly beloved re- wrestler and man by not only the fans, but also from what we've seen, the professional wrestling community. Uh, Tarek, I'll pitch it over to you. Break down the story and give us your how you heard and the reaction and the whole spiel. I mean, I pretty much just re- resp- I found out pretty much when everyone else found out waking up. What was it? Wednesday, m- m- Wednesday morning. I, th- uh, I think it, it was Thursday actually morning? Tuesday, late Tuesday night. Or uh, or Wednesday, what I mean by Wednesday morning was like when everyone found out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, th- I woke up and just seeing all over my feed. Uh, Jay Briscoe passes away at what was it? 38. Yeah, at the young age of thirty eight, just a Jesus, a couple years older than us. It's crazy to think it's, about. Yeah, and that's uh, just where it began, gang. Super sobering. Yeah, and at first I'm just thinking, oh God, did so- what happened? Did he did he uh like make a mistake and some? But then it just was finding out he was driving his daughter's, uh, I believe it was back from a. It was either to or from I think uh, it was, cheerleading, I think. I think it was from a cheerleading event. And it just was heartbreaking to hear uh, about. Cause I'm going to be honest. I like I knew of the Briscoes growing up. Or at least, at least growing up. I mean, not like children here, but like teenager early early 20s i only knew of the briscoes and it was more during these times with aew and and tony Khan purchasing ring of honor where i actually got to actually see their work and now i'm just thinking okay now i see why everyone loves these guys so much because they are quite entertaining and just now making me want to look into the his the Ring of Honor history actually gives me another like gives me a real reason to subscribe to the Ring of Honor stream service just so I can see the history because I didn't know that the Briscoes were pretty much a day one Ring of Honor uh, name stays. Oh yeah, yeah. So, I've been I've been following Ring of Honor since I think high school college. And the Briscoes were always like a big time centerpiece of Ring of Honor. And mm-hmm. when even then, even before the, the AEW buyout of Ring of Honor, I was so happy whenever I would check in on whatever Ring of Honor was doing. And come hell or high water, Jay and Mark were always there, especially mm-hmm. after hearing that he that Jay Briscoe actually ended up winning the ROH world t- world title a couple times. I mean, yeah. Like, that, 
that was when I lo- really looked into it. I'm like, oh wow, he was a world cha- he was a world champion. Wow, this is I really got to real look. Definitely pull a scholar and really dig look into this. Look into well, this man, this tag team's uh, this man's ta- and tag team's history. And just from just the response from literally everyone in the wrestling community wrestlers to even to aew uh, ring of honor to even nxt and tonight on smackdown they uh they bring him up how much he actually left his mark in the wrestling world and just now thinking of uh briscoes versus ftr3 that was who would have figured that would have been his fi- uh, his final match, and he left quite the match uh, to leave on. And it's really sad to say that, but it's also just think how dedicated he was to like perfecting his technique, both in the tag team and single scene, to the point again. It's now making me wanting to actually look more into their history. So I hate that it has to be under these circumstances, but now I'm really intrigued to see, okay, let's look at some of these past matches. Let's look at how, when he won the ring of honor world title, let's see when he faced Danielson, punk, Joe, Claudio. Let's look at this history. Oh, I'll, I'll do you one better. I, I do have a couple of the DVDs from the original, I don't want to say original run of commercially available DVDs from Ring of Honor. I'm, I've got to believe there at least a cu- are a couple Briscoe's matches. I've oh, also absolutely. had I've also had the pleasure of seeing the Briscoes and Jay especially perform live a couple times. Uh, I remember when I was in college, uh, there were they were in New Jersey, and I got to see and it was the main event. This was when. Uh, the Briscoes were feuding with a little uh, little faction called Age of the Fall. Do you know who the Age of the Fall consisted of? I did not. Oh, I do not. Okay, get, Again, get I got, this. I got a lot of homework to do when it comes to uh, the original like run of Ring of Honor. Okay, get this. The Age of the Fall consisted of three people. Jimmy Jacobs, who mm-hmm. went on to do some... Pro- production work with the WWE Necro Butcher. Oh, wow. And a little guy went by the name of Tyler Black. Yeah. Now Seth, <laughs> yeah. There you Before go. Before he was no, Seth oh, Rollins, fun. that three combination of people, I remember very vividly when this faction, the Age of the Fall, came out. It was like it took over that summer. That's and the so show fun. I went to, they filmed a like a few, they were feuding with the Briscoes for a time. Jay, I remember Jay Briscoe was in a match. He came out and did something, and then they chained up Mark Briscoe to a gurney. Like, hey, look at your brother, Jay. And then that just sort of totally shut down and distracted the match entirely. And then later on, they had a dark match to send everyone happy in the main event, completely untaped. He had a hardcore match, a hardcore brawl all over the arena. Jay Briscoe versus Necro Butcher. Oh, that must have been fun. That was such oh. a wild, fun match. By the time of the end of the match, when everyone was falling, falling, just filing out and all that stuff, I was literally stepping over Necro Butcher and Jay Briscoe's blood. It was, it was one of the wildest matches i had ever seen live and it was and they were they weren't phoning anything in it was just legit 100 percent every night that's what you got from a brisk from the briscoes in especially jay in every match every promo what you saw during the AEW era was just the tip of the iceberg they've mm-hmm. got a whole huge backlog that's just as good and i am just so immensely glad that even if due to technical reasons they couldn't be on aew 
they were there in spirit and they got to show oh, of off everything that they were about with three match of the year contenders last year. And I'm just glad you people like you were finally able to see what's again, people who have grown up with them in the early ring of honor days have known all along because they certainly deserve it. And they deserve that recognition. I definitely like what really sold me uh, not well, on uh, really wanting to look into the, this man's career. And it like it wasn't ha- didn't have anything to do with like his in ring skills. It actually was the video of him practicing the cheers with his daughter. Mm. Is what's is what sold me on wanting to actually look into this man's uh, his uh, wrestling career. Because I'm just thinking, if this man, like, was able to be this great of a father figure, and still have a memorable career in wrestling. This is someone that's actually really worth the time and effort to really look into. And uh, I know that they post they had an update on his daughters. Uh, I didn't get a chance to look at it. What what's what was the update? Neither did daughters? I. Uh, last I checked is that the daughter's condition, I believe, had stabilized. Uh, the condition is still serious, but thankfully their GoFundMe page has also has already not only met their goal, but exceeded it considerably. Mm -hmm. So as far as medical costs, the family is thankfully is all set. There's, and there's going to be enough more than enough to, to work through in the, in the days ahead. I, I actually was out and about when I heard, I didn't realize that the day after he passed away was actually Mark's Mark Briscoe's birthday. Oh, yeah, well, that I had the hurts. same exact reaction in the car driving to the gym. I was like, oh, no, this poor family, poor Mark. That this... hits hard. Yeah, and oh, and for so hurt. many hurt. different levels, too. Like, I, I did want to make, say, bring this up to the one of the whole reason. Are you aware of the whole reason why uh, TBS, TNT, didn't want a didn't want the Briscoes on AEW television. Are you familiar with the situation? It has something to do with what he said in the past, right? Some kind of uh, like homophobic slurs. He, I remember when this happened. It was actually a single tweet about something about like wanting to homeschool his kids. Like, ain't nobody going to tell me what. What's going on with my kids' education? Uh, something about the gays getting married or something like that. And that was just the one tweet that sent everything into a spiral. That being said, every every single person from Effie to Polio Del Mar and every other person who we ever encountered in wrestling or without he not only did Jay apologize and legitimately repent and show actual growth, everyone, everyone, no matter who you are, who encountered him, all said the same thing. This is legit. And that's what I've that's what I've heard as well. Just like the full details, like I said, I, I believe it was something homophobic, but I do know that. He was working his damnedest to show how sincere he was, and taking in it, taking back what he said, apologizing. Just, yeah, and just growing. And yeah, as, growing as a person. Yeah, he's not. Yeah. He wasn't that person that uh, sent who posted that tweet. Yeah, and he, and again, I truly believe in my heart that we can all, we are all growing, we are all changing, we can all improve. Very mm-hmm. few of us actively select to be ignorant and choose actively choose to stay that way. And not only is, in my mind, Jay Briscoe living proof of that, or during, at least was, that he he proved that he he does it out of he did what he did out of a sense of self preservation for him and his family. But he can also learn. He can all if he meets you. He can learn about you. He can truly engage and grow as a human being, as we all can. And 
from every part of me as just a man, as a wrestling fan, as everything that I am. This, especially as, uh, even as a man of a similar age, I'm only a couple of years younger than Jay was. Mm -hmm. It's this one because of how young he was and how sudden this is. There wasn't a sickness. There was no moral failure on his part. It's just it an was accident. just a terrible, tragic accident. And yep. I'm going to say it. I don't consider myself someone who is that deeply scarred by death and loss. But I've also had the luxury of a lot of people have either been sick or are troubled or something horrible happens. This one, this one really hurts. Mm -hmm. Because it was just something out of, just out of his control. I mean, not like he was trying to get into an accident. He was driving his daughters home. So just, that's just the mysterious the mysterious uh, factors of life. You never know when it's just going to happen. Yeah. And especially there's a bit, for me personally, there's a bit of nostalgia in there too, just because I've been watching them. Like I, when I see the Briscoes, I immediately have that connotation between them and my college days of mm -hmm. when I was really in the super in the ring of honor. I was following them religiously and the Briscoes were already in the mix. And it almost seems like a part of my past that meant a lot to me is now gone. And that, as much as it really sucks, it honestly is extremely touching. Just even today, even when we're filming this on Friday for right after SmackDown, the amount of armbands that say J or Dem Boys or... I, I only see Dem Boys. I didn't see any, like, J specifically. I just saw Dem Boys. I, saw, I think I saw Dem Boys on SmackDown and on Wednesday Night Dynamite. I saw a lot of J. Yeah, I'm, J yeah tonight Vincent. specifically is more... Cause I, more Dem Boys. Was Dem Boys, yeah. And it's really nice to see them actually acknowledging Jay's passing on commentary. I feel like in Vince McMahon days that it wouldn't even be brought up. We probably would only get the armbands on some wrestlers and that'll be the end of it. Or that'll, yeah, that would be the end of it. That was all that would be acknowledged. Probably. Un unfortunately. Yeah. But thankfully in the era that we've got the fraternity that comes with the pro wrestling world is really shining through. And as much as all this bad stuff is happening at the corporate side of things and okay, who's going to buy what? Who got paid off? Is this man going for another power play? Is he going to take over this? Blah, blah, blah. Who's going to get the With tables now that Devon, Devon resigned? Uh, Bubba, Bubba and Devon are already planning a they're already sort of hinting at a reunion of sorts on the independent circuit, but well, he's that, not going to we'll cross... He's not going to wrestle. Yeah, even if it's just like for like an appearance, I'm sure yeah. that some, they'll do something. But mm -hmm. that's beside the point. Even out of everything else happening in the world of wrestling, there is still beauty coming from ashes from this. And as much as I, I personally, and I know a lot of other people are going to really, really miss Jay. And yes, Mark is in our prayers. It, there's still a bittersweet feeling of they got they got all of the recognition that they deserve and then some. And I'm glad you brought it up, Tarek, because in a little bit I'm gonna well probably not in a little bit. But it's late we're filming, but <laughs> I am gonna go through my archives. I'm gonna dig up as many Ring of Honor DVDs as I can find, and I'll. I'll pass them along your way so you can watch the Briscoes. I'm going to say it in their prime. Oh, I'm, I can't wait. They all, if you liked what you saw with FTR, let me tell you, they were always that good. Mm -hmm. Now, just 
like, we may be the scholars of wrestling, but we're still learning. Like I'm, I wish I was able to uh, follow Rick, like be able to actually follow Ring of Honor as hardly as you. I mean, it was it was it's been it was hard to me for me to watch uh, WWE growing up or WWF at the time growing up from a family who was just not for it. So yeah, and in all fairness, back then there really wasn't as much channels of distribution as there are today. Mm-hmm. now you can find wrestling all across the world all across like youtube no, or just whatever got a streaming service of the entire video library boom yeah but back then it was harder it was sort of harder to follow at that time you pretty much would have to go to fye to get wrestling dvds and that's what i did because yeah. i i saw some clips on the internet i thought oh hey this is incredible this is dope I'm going to go to FYE or Sam Goody or whatever and get every oh, single Sam DVD Goody. I can. <laughs> Sam Goody. Hey, it's <laughs> it's what you did back then. It is. It is. Or uh, renting it at Blockbuster. Oh, boy. You were, lu- you were lucky if you had wrestling DVDs at Blockbuster. At least I know mine didn't. But in any case, yeah, uh, a big part of wrestling history was lost this week but absolutely not forgotten and just never will the be amount forgotten. of love man th- this one is this one's going to be felt for a good long while but the legacy that they left in the, especially in the wake of tag team wrestling and keeping that scene alive after such a drought they're they're once in a generation easy and they're their matches and their legacy is going to live on because they all hit at the perfect, perfect time. So, yeah, I'm going to pass along those DVDs to you. But speaking of the rest of the world of wrestling, not only did we get some interesting developments with the WWE tag titles, but personally on SmackDown earlier tonight, we got something I've been waiting for for a long time, and that is... The return of the Firefly Funhouse. Firefly Funhouse Bray is back. I was bringing it into this feud with LA Knight. I love this. I really did. As soon as the jingle hit, my immediate response was, I wonder how Jeff and Season are reacting to this. Have you ever seen a dog react to a squirrel? Like <laughs> it was just like a whole bunch as later. I'm just like on my phone looking at something, and then the, the theme song hits just, both of us just like stop and just like look like I was expecting <laughs> the way I, you were explaining it. I was expecting like you to be in the living room, you're in the living room all by yourself. All of a sudden the the jingle hits, and all of a sudden you just hear season don't 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 is that the firefly funhouse? <laughs> Oh no, we we were both in the living room. We were just sitting there and we just all like like dogs looking at a ball and or squirrel. We're just like eyes bugging out. We're like <gasps> and we're just like turn it up quick. Oh boy, that that was just a there's some moments in wrestling that are just like pure fun. And mm-hmm. it was but I'll have to admit on a semi serious note uh, I'm not sure if you caught it, but there was one line towards the very end of the promo where Bray was like, "You have been war- you've been warned, LA Knight. You're the one who opened the door. Mm-hmm. Whatever comes out is your problem." Now, given this promo and what we saw from Bray Wyatt last week, where he was adopting more of the mannerisms and more of the lines from the cult leader eater of worlds era bray i've got an ongoing theory and i want to know what you think of this because of this whole introduction of like the door and him coming out of a door every single week during his entrances i am wondering if we're going to see whenever he comes out we're going to possibly see a different persona of bray Oh, absolutely. During his matches, like maybe sometime we'll get the Eater of Worlds Bray or the early cult leader days. Maybe one week we'll get the Fiend or the Firefly Funhouse Bray. Or maybe one time we'll actually get Uncle Howdy for all we know. 
if this is where we're going with all this, I appreciate that kind of treatment so much. It's like it's all to me, it's almost like what they almost did with Mick Foley, where was it would like keep repeating. Yeah. But I now was just about to say, like, are you expecting are you expecting Bray Wyatt to come out as cult leader Bray, Fiend Bray? Not Uncle during the Howard. rumble. Not he's not gonna get the the Mick Foley rumble treatment. At least, <laughs> at least I hope his cardio is in shape if they try to do that. But yeah, I, I don't think it's going to happen to quite that extent. To... But I, is this I do be a see cinematic it match? Nobody really knows. It's but it sure is endorsed by Mountain Dew. I'll tell you that. Yeah, hopefully it'll be a better than the zombie match with uh, Miz and Damian Priest. That is a that's a virtual guarantee that. The the bar cannot be that low all the time. That's... Just, yeah. All we know, anything goes, pinfall submission. That's all we have of this. I... I will say, however, that I am intrigued by, in terms of switching out personas and character elements, I, I'm really hoping that this is what was planned for all along, and depending on the feud he's in, and depending on what stance he wants to take, whether he's a face or a heel, whether he's going after a champion, whether he's not, where he's going after, depending on what he's doing, he can sort of unleash those different sides of himself. He could oh, be the cult be... leader. He could be the fiend. He could be something else. He's definitely going to be, he's definitely going to be different things. I, I'm actually all for that. Yeah. And, and that's why I really started. At first I was excited just because Bray Wyatt was back in general. But if this is the direction that they're going, I'm. This could potentially be the best incarnation of Bray Wyatt yet because it's all the incarnations. You never exactly. know what you're gonna get. I am. I am super hyped about this. Like I know a lot of people have been very vocal just how long this story is being told, and I honestly don't like. I don't mind long we it's been so long since wwe has had long-term storytelling and i will admit it do, it does reach a point where there were a couple of times where he was basically saying the same thing just a di same thing different week like uh maybe twice three times tops but now now the tires are definitely now going in motion with this storyline and where he wants to go with this character and whatever the hell he's doing, like is if there actually is a separate entity of Uncle Howdy, uh, with, uh, with Bo playing him, uh, what they're doing, what they're gonna do with Alexa Bliss, I am just the the like I said, the wheels are now in motion. The talking is now done. I like that they're actual. I like that LA Knight is not being booked like how Seth was being booked when he was facing the Fiend. Because he's ta he's take LA Knight is taking these stories. He's like, okay, this isn't scaring me. This is just this is just weird. He's just weirded out by this. I actually I think his reaction to it is just quite possibly one of the most natural things. It's like, what the hell am I gotten myself into? And I I love that because it's a real thing. Like, what is he's Matt Kennedy Gould? What is going on? There's a reference for all for all of us. For only the inner. Give, only us, our give inner us a thumb. Service. Give us a thumbs up if you know where that's from. <laughs> and I actually I think he's act. Uh, La Knight's getting actually uh a good rub from this. Yes, thankfully he's not just going to get steamrolled over. His persona and the way he's presenting himself is just way too strong. When yeah. this feud with Bray Wyatt is done, yeah, when he's done, he will abs. They can put him anywhere on the card. He is, he is too good, and he's going to have a great run. I can just tell. He's going to be. I I can see him as like a top mid level, uh, top mid card guy for a while. I would even go further. I think that if oh, they he can go push further? him right, yeah. I, he can, no he can go further. I'm not denying that at all. It's just 
like a year or two. Keep building him up. He, have him be a top level guy. Hell, uh, give him a mid card. Send him over to Raw. Give him the United States title because I don't want I don't want Walter losing the Intercontinental Championship. Break the record. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Break the record, man. Come on, Austin Theory versus L.A. Knight. I think that's a great U.S. title match. Seth Rollins yeah. versus uh, L.A. Knight. Actually, to be perfectly honest, I think he actually would flourish more on Raw than SmackDown. But you might you might have something there, but I hey. actually more thinking about it, I'm like actually it makes sense for him to go to Raw. Uh, but yeah, I'm now yeah the wheels are now in motion with this feud. It's now starting to pick. We're actually now getting pieces on where this could possibly go, and now it makes me look forward to. Plus, we have a match that we have absolutely no idea what the hell is going to happen in this. So, yeah, I'm in. I think I'm we all are that. too. And now we also speaking of titles, uh, you actually brought this up when we were talking it out. I was so distracted by Ray Wyatt and the Firefly Funhouse coming back that you even brought up a, the situation with the tag titles, where between the tag title tournament on SmackDown for the number one contendership and on Raw, it looks like the Usos are set to have a, a title match with the Judgment Day at some point soon. At Raw 30. It is going to be at week. Raw 30. Okay. Mm -hmm. Next week. So, yeah. You reasoned that it looks like it's going to, like they're go actually going to separate the tag titles again, correct? It looks like they're heading in that direction where they're make, they want to make it clear that the, at least the tag titles, I don't know what they're doing with the world title. I, I actually do think I actually have read that there are talks to separating the world title, uh, both world titles, and they are just starting it now with the tag titles. And my response to that is, unless they are actually going full on brand, like now brand full on brand split, now no more crossovers between the shows. I think this is a stupid idea. Like full on, I am not, I am not for this at all. I like, I like the, I like the format that I've gotten in my head on how WWE is now being presented. At least when it comes with, with the titles, like I kind of like that they're in a way keeping a brand split because Hell, it's a giant roster. Of course, they're going to have certain people show up only on SmackDown on Raw. But have the world champion on both shows, have the tag team champions on both shows. I, I've said this before on, on this show. Uh, have one singular tag team champions. Have one singular world champion. And the other titles can actually be separated. Uh, Like have the Intercontinental Champion be the, the champion of SmackDown, have the United States Champion be the champion of Raw, and just have the world title or WWE Undisputed Universal Championship, I think. I Long think that's how the, yeah, you know, we all know what we're talking about. Yeah. Long ass name. Have that be the, sh be the one guy who can show up on both shows. Same thing with the tag team champions. Same thing uh, with the women's tag team champions. Go on all, uh, go when it was uh, originally supposed to be on all three brands, but including NXT. The idea of separating the tag team titles, it really doesn't make sense to me if they're going to keep the lines blurred when it comes to this separ separation of the brands. If they want to have, this is something that you, me, and Brian have talked about off uh, off camera. Just actually, I think it, it was on our scholars message board. Uh, just It was just the three of us really responding to it. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, internet. Oh, oh, how it works. Um, if they wanted to have a multi, another multi-man uh, championship, I would just say go for a trios championship. 
people will probably think, oh, they're just ripping off AEW. But AEW is not the only wrestling company that has trios championships. So in a world where the creative is run by a guy who, first and foremost, is a professional wrestler and understands the business and wants to evolve with it, and that is actually not a pun. In, that was a pun, none intended. Just because Triple H Evolution is a mystery. Um, I, I didn't even put that together, but go on. Well, it's like it's coming out of my mouth, so it just clicked. I'm like, that's not what I was going for, but okay. Um, why not bring in a trios championship in WWE that once again can go on <laughs> both shows? They they are building up trios in WWE to where an actual trios division separated from a a tag division that can be on both shows actually sounds amazing. There's in my mind, there's really only one reason I can think of why this would not be a wise idea is if they're already planning on, if they really are planning on dividing up the Raw and SmackDown tag titles again, uh, there is a chance, I believe, that Trio's championships on top of all of this other things, uh, especially at a time when I feel like tag teams are really still on the upward swing in the post-McMahon creative era, I am kind of worried that if they did try and introduce Trio's titles at the same time as Raw tag and SmackDown tag titles, I'm worried that it would be a few too many titles. No, here's the if, thing. Like, it if, wouldn't, they, like uh, if they have, kept... I would agree. I agree on that with uh, if they actually do sep- like if they keep this title tag titles separate. Yeah, absolutely. But I'm just saying, like, just have one tag team titles, one trios titles, just the WWE tag team titles. And oh yeah, the WWE trios champ. If they want to have like, if they actually do want to have multi. Two, like two multi-man titles instead of just having it be spe- separated from brands because when you really try like now after we record when i get home i'm probably gonna start writing down like how many tag teams are on both raw and smackdown and how many people can actually be put into a trio or can actually be a trios and actually like build a trios division i mean if aew can do that with only three hours of tel- of weekly weekly television. Why can't WWE do it with five hours? There again, I'm sure okay, that no, it comes down to some include cre- NXT. I'm sure it comes down to some some weird like other technical or planning reason. I agree with you. In a perfect world, I'd love to see that. But at the same time, like if they want to really make their tag team divisions more robust and have a rich selection of tag teams on each individual show, if they do still want to keep those rosters split for whatever reason, then, yeah, I I can see them wanting to focus exclusively on tag teams. But there's no there hasn't been a word of um, them actually. Like. Full on making a nut making the brand split a split. It's just hey, let's just ha- let's just separate the let's just separate the tag titles and the world titles for reasons. There there is a chance that this could be just a method of because it's been going on this way for so long at this point that it's just a sort of a it I guess you could make the argument where it's just the matter of the format that we're the company is just used to doing things this way. And just at this point, it could be more beneficial to just keep things and actually maintain them, maintain the, each individual roster on both raw and SmackDown and giving some, uh, some more increased stability that way, as opposed to everyone flies around to each show and blah, 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 blah. Or plus there is one other reason I just did, did think of. Right now in North America, having a trios title in AEW is one of the things that makes it stand out. 
And I remember the last time uh, Triple H ever tried to do something that AEW was doing with his pet project, the way they were doing it, they got spanked. They lost the Wednesday Night War. And I'm th- I'm w- I gotta wonder if I've gotta wonder if Triple H is maybe thinking to himself, I can't try and out AEW AEW. My better the better long term option is to do focus on what WWE is doing well and improve that. What do you think? Am I am I just like talking on my butt right now, or well, is there, or is there hopefully something to this theory? I don't, I don't know. It's kind of hard for me to really like come up with a good response, I'm like because once it's kind of just thrown back to the whole now you're just copying AEW, but what's like again? When I get home, I'm going to now go through and see how many actual tag teams each show has to see if there is like, oh, is it credible enough to break up these tag team titles instead of just merging them and make and making one belt, which I've even seen designs for a single like a like a single set of tag titles. And it, I mean, I think the whole uh, like it's the same design, just, you know, more golden because they're merging two silvers to make gold because you know science <laughs> alchemy yay <laughs> sorry I, I just couldn't i couldn't resist um but just the strap would be one half red have one half blue to represent it it can go on both shows but oh, again i like the idea of it but it's just like it, it, it is kind of silly to have a multicolored belt but hey mjf has a multicolored belt held Danielson had a wooden belt. Yeah, this is sort of what I'm thinking where I'm sure it's absolutely possible that they could pull off a trios title. Oh, but... they have they have the people to make tri- um, help bloodline uh brawling brutes the inevitably returning hurt business. Now now with yeah. Omos. There is there is now that I'm thinking about it They've got the people for it, but again, I've got to imagine that thinking about it, a trio's title, it, as cool as it could be and as much as it could add to a show, it could also not be all that. As there's a potential, because of the different logistics of it, it could be potentially be not as great as we're expecting. Like, I just remember that. Believe it or not, New Japan actually has trios championships. Again, I was just quiz. Pop quiz. Do you know who the first trios championships were for New Japan Pro Wrestling? You'll ne- you'll never guess. So why are you throwing a pop? Uh, uh... It's you'll you'll see where my mind is going in just a moment. But if you had to take a guess, who who would you when, think? Uh, when were they? When when did they uh, introduce a trios t- uh, title? I want to say maybe two or three years ago, okay, approximately. Let's see. Is it someone yeah. from Bullet Club? I'm not saying nothing. Just take a wild guess. I guarantee you, you'll be wrong. Screw it, Omega and the Bucks. I don't care. <laughs> wrong. <laughs> I know it's I know it's wrong. I just threw I, it, I just like I <laughs> Ooh. Okay. It was believe it or not, the Briscoes. Oh Jesus. And, and oh no, it gets worse. The Briscoes and Toru Yano. <laughs> I told you you'd never I see would it never coming. Never have gotten that. Never have gotten that unless I looked it up. Oh Please, you guys. I remember very vividly the promos that they cut, like right before that event. Like the Briscoes were, like, yeah, we're teaming up with Yano, the man with the highest DVD sales in Japan. Yeah, we're gonna get those triple. We're gonna get those trio titles. Man up, them DVD boys. Killed. It was the what? It was the weirdest promo, but it DVD was like, <laughs> I know it was like. 
I, it was like if I Why had to I come even, up with a I trio. I should have thought of that. I should have thought of that. No, it was so absurd. Like it is absurd. It's absolutely absurd. It That's was why one of those I, things uh, where when, when I saw it, it was like, "This is my team. There's no chance they're gonna win. I'm just gonna enjoy that." Oh crap! They actually won. <laughs> How did this happen? Dreams do come true. I'll tell you what. I'll <laughs> at once we once we stop recording for the night. I'm gonna go on YouTube and see if I can look this up. I'll send it to you later. That's great. All right. But yeah. <laughs> Point being, this can go any number of ways. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. And just because you should doesn't mean you can. Titles are weird. That's all I got. Yeah. But anyway, that's that's the biggest news this week in wrestling. Opinions are all over the place. Now we're where we're going to pitch it over to you, our fellow fans. What do you think is going to happen with the future of the tag titles? Should WWE introduce trios championships? But for this week, most importantly of all, do you have any special memories of or favorite matches from Jay and the Briscoe brothers as a whole? No matter where you are, no matter what you think, we want to hear from you. So drop us a line, leave us a comment. And if you want to chat with us on our personal Twitter machines, join in the conversation. Cool. Where can they reach you? You can reach me le- relearning some uh, Ring of Honor or relearn learning some Ring Ring of Honor stuff at the Avataric. And you can find me at I'm Robbie Rage. But before we go, we also want to ch- be sure to check us out on all of our social media because this week is the last week where you can enter our 2023 Royal Rumble prediction game. Predictions are now live. Look for it in our Facebook groups. We'll be posting links to it on our Twitter feeds. And for all of these relevant links and more, including the link to the Royal Rumble game, where you can play for a chance to win a $25 e-gift card to WWE Shop, check out all these links and more at our link tree. That's link tree slash scholars of wrestling. Just check it out in the description below, wherever you are. Uh, And with that... (laughs) <laughs> we had a lot to say this week it was a wild week lots of ups and downs but you knew it, you had to know we were going to talk about it all because you know we are we are the scholars of wrestling and you have just been schooled you're, you're welcome. welcome see you next week for the royal rumble <laughs>